Welcome back to another video. So this will be regarding the ply file format. As we can see over here for 3D scanners, so I'm currently over here on Artec 3D scan database. We have the file format, so OBJ, STL, ply, WRL and Blender file. So regarding ply, this will be a little bit better than STL because we can also add textures, but those textures will be vertex color, not uh, UV unwrap like the OBJ or WRL. So we see over here the file format. This was created um, at Stanford and uh, it's also known as Stanford Triangle Format. And it's mainly was uh, designed and intended for storing 3D scan datasets. As you can see, it was, was initially released in uh, 97. The STL was previously released in 87. So um, regarding that, it's a little bit better than STL since we can also have those textures. Now, let's take a look at the case study. I already downloaded the ply file format over here. So I will jump it in Blender. If I will go to File, Import, Stanford Ply, I will select the model on the desktop. We're gonna have the Fox Cal over here. This is the file size, almost 28 megabytes. Regarding scaling, with one, this will go and be converted to meters, but this was 3D scan within millimeters. So if I will just import it, it will be a thousand times larger. So I'm going to scale it down with 0.01 factor. And this will be the true size of the 3D scan. If I will enable viewport shading with the texture, we're going to see that this ply doesn't have the texture assigned. Even though within the folder, so I'm currently over here within that folder, we're going to see the fox skull and uh, it will have to unwrap the um, maps over here. So this will be one, and this will be the second one. You see the, the size over here, so 2048 by 2048. If I will just try to create a material, we see that the Fox Car will not have any material assigned. If I will create a principal BSDF in this case, and if I would to link that Fox Cal texture to the base color, we're going to see that this will not display accordingly. So we only have that, let's say, vertex color applied over here, but not exactly as it was within a 3D scan. So Blender cannot visualize ply texture like this. So we would have to convert this. So if I will swap this to the other base color, we're going to see that a different vertex color will be applied. And usually we need additional tools in order to convert the texture for the ply file format. So we can do that with MeshLab and have it exported as, um, as a model with a texture. Now, if I will go within layout and uh, I also extracted the OBJ for this. So we see this Foxcal OBJ this will be the file. We have the material library, but in this case, the file size, this will be just for the mesh, will be see almost 65 megabytes, so um, more than double. If I will import this, again, the model will be really large, but now we see that this texture for the OBJ will be properly applied. If I will scale this with 0.01, hit comma in order to go zoom in on the selected, we see that the mapping is properly aligned. We only have some problems with the specular over here. So the IOR for the principal BSDF material, I will set this to one. So we won't have all those uh, reflections onto the surface of the model. And I need to do that for all the materials. So we had material zero and material one. This material two, if I will delete it, we're going to see that that hasn't been used. But if I will go within the shading for this one, we're going to see it will have the same uh, texture over here. So the Fox Cal JPEG assigned to the base color. But now the OBJ will manage to read that texture. So this is why OBJ files are, um, are better since uh, they can read the texture a lot better than the ply file format. If you're going to take a look at the geometry statistics, we see for the selected one, so the total number of faces, 700K in this case, for the ply file format, 
if I will select the OBJ, it will be the same. So regarding the geometry, there aren't any differences regarding this, but we're going to see that the file size will be a lot larger. So this is why ply file format is great to store 3D scan data because the file size will be a lot, uh, a lot smaller than uh, mesh objects. If you're going to check over here, so we also have the STL, but uh, this will not have the texture, but we also have the WRL. We see the file size for the R hive will be even higher than the OBJ. And I will jump over here within Blender 4.0. This is the last version of Blender that still is capable of importing um, WRL file format. So we see it over here at the end, X3D extensible 3D. If I will select that uh, files, this will be that. We're going to see over here that the file size in this case is even larger. So starting from the first one, second one is 65, and this will be 85. If I will import this model, we're going to see that Blender will start processing. Even the loading time will take a little bit longer than the OBJ. And we have the model loaded. If I'm going to zoom out, again, we're going to have the same scaling problem. So S0.01. And this will be the real size of the model. In this case, also the default cube was selected in scale, but I'm just going to delete that. If I enable a texture, we're going to say that the texture will look like this. So we see that for the WRL, the material created over here with an IOR of uh, 1.5, it will not have that specular look like the OBJ. And if I will shade this smooth, we're going to see that that triangle mesh will disappear. But now, if I will check the statistics, we're going to see the total face count. In this case, will only be 500,000 faces. So compared to the OBJ, which had 700, we're going to see that uh, this model, when it was saved as WRL, it was also decimated for uh, 200k faces. So this was an overview regarding ply file format, why it is still relevant and important, even though it was created, um, as we can see, more than uh, 30 years ago. It is still a great file format and is widely used by 3D scanning uh, solutions, mainly to store data. Okay, so I hope you find this video useful. I will position a similar video on the left side and a subscribe button to the right. So that's it. Thanks for watching.